Woj reporting that the Utah Jazz now willing to listen to trade scenarios for their star guard Donovan Mitchell. Now, you guys talked yesterday about how my guy Danny Ainge doesn't see Donovan Mitchell as the face of a franchise. Well, maybe that's because he sees him as the face of a different franchise for which he could get a lot back, making his franchise even better. Smart guy, Danny Ainge. Smart guy. So, Broussard, which team should go all out to land Donovan Mitchell? Well, Jenna, the obvious answer is the New York Knicks, but I'm sure our Kevin Wilds will exhaust that option. So I'll leave that to you, Wilds. I'll leave that to you. And I'll throw out (laughs) another team in the East, the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat. Now, obviously, they want Kevin Durant. He would like to go there. It would be terrific if they could get Durant. But that's going to be difficult to do. All right, Bam Adebayo obviously can't be involved in a trade. Not that they'd want to trade him. And Durant, they want to keep their nucleus intact to put KD in there. It's going to be hard to do. Three or four team deal, and even then you got to send away some good pieces. I think the Heat could get Donovan Mitchell and have a better chance of keeping that core of Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo And if you want to throw Kyle Lowry in there as well, you probably got a better chance of keeping that core together. I don't mind moving Lowry. I would love a big three of Mitchell, Bam, and Jimmy Butler because they're scoring. We all know they're kind of lack of talent when you talk about the elite teams and lack of scoring is really what did the Heat in in the playoffs this past season. If you add in Donovan Mitchell, question, answer, problem solved. So – Nick, I think that Miami, obviously a lot of places he would fit. If I was Brooklyn, would I love to replace Kyrie Irving with Donovan Mitchell? Sure, but we know that's not happening. So I'm going to go with the Miami Heat. All right, I'm going to say something that, God, I think it has been six weeks since I've said it. I totally agree with Chris Broussard. That is a great point by Chris Broussard. The Heat are the perfect team because they have – the established number one in Jimmy Butler, a great playoff performer. They have a great defense, team defense, that Donovan won't you know, kill with his liabilities on that end. And what they need is someone other than Jimmy who can go get a bucket. And they need a, a legitimate uh, option from the three-point line that's also a great player, not a guy who all he does on offense is shoot three. So for all those reasons, right. Miami fits perfectly. I just don't know if they have the pieces to get it done. They are they, they, they are constricted right. on what they can trade pick-wise. I certainly, and Brew, just tell me if you agree with this, I would not trade Bam for Donovan Mitchell. I don't think that makes you better. Bam, and if I'm, if I'm Miami and I know... I have to go through Giannis every single year at some point. Bam is in- more valuable to me than anyone out West. So I love the fit for Miami. I don't know if the trade can work. So I'm just going to throw out two teams that, again, if I'm trading for Donovan, I need to be close and have a clear number one. So who are teams that could do that? Philly should make a phone call. Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey for Donovan Mitchell. Yep. There'd be no picks. You're, what you would be getting is Tyrese Maxey. That's the young guy on a rookie contract who one day could be Donovan Mitchell. That's the th- that's what you maybe you throw in a late pick, but they don't have a lot of picks to trade themselves because of the picks they traded for uh, James Harden. The other team is Memphis. Memphis does have the picks, and they can trade Jaron Jackson, who makes the same money as Donovan Mitchell. Jaron Jackson plus picks. Those teams, I think, Donovan walks in and it's like, oh, we can win the title. Like we are, you know, and he doesn't have to be your number one option. So uh, Miami, I totally agree with. I think it's a very difficult trade to make. Philly and Memphis are far more straightforward. But if I'm a bad team, I don't want to give up future picks for Donovan so I can have the same ceiling of second round at best that Utah had. So those are uh, Miami, Philly, Memphis, to me, in that order, are the those three teams, Waddles. 
I, I think that's great. I think you guys did a great job with the creative writing exercise. Broussard, that was solid. <laughs> I've heard the heat bandied about. I'll give you an A-. minus. Nick, I thought that was interesting about you could offload Tobias Harris. I'm going to give you a B-plus for that one and a straight-up A for the Memphis idea. So great job, everybody. Now we'll get to what's really going to happen. Oh, it's finally happening. <laughs> Jenna, I've been saying on this show longer long than I've been time. talking about the baby go. You know what? Leon Rose has got a CAA card. He's been waiting to play. And I said, maybe it's going to be Zion. And then Zion stayed there. I'm like, okay, it's going to be obviously Jalen Brunson. And once you hire his father and your own son is representing him. So that one worked. And then we've got someone on the assistance coaching staff who is close with Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is an old CAA guy. He's thinking he's still a CAA client. He's just going to the Mets where his father works. Uh, he's going to Rangers games. He's going out to dinner with Quickly. He's working out in New York. He lives approximately 10 minutes from me right here. So do I think that he's going to go to Memphis, Miami, or Philly? No. I think the die has been cast. And I think Leon Rose has been acquiring picks to send the picks to Danny Ainge, who's nothing he likes more than a potential pick where and a potential superstar picks. that he can, you know, kick it down the road, down the road, down the road. And then maybe when he leaves the and franchise, then- they'll go to the finals and he can buy a ticket and go to the game. So, Nick, we know that the long drought in New York is about to be over. It's been one playoff experience, uh, playoff appearance in the last nine years. In the past 20 years, the Knicks have had gone to the playoffs five times and had 13 coaches. Well, it's all about to end because Mr. Guaranteed Playoffs is coming to New York. Finally, Leon is going to bring, bring him here after I've been flirting with it for my entire tenure on this show. So I'm happy. I've got Donovan Mitchell jerseys ready to go up on KevinWilds.com as soon as the deal is over. I've been stockpiling them, getting them personalized, ready to go. So you guys had some creative ideas, but neither of those things are happening. Donovan to New York. If Baker Mayfield doesn't win that competition, would I be dumbfounded? No, I wouldn't. I because would. I'm not going to – Baker Mayfield hasn't been that good. Why? Why? What's he done? Here's the other thing, guys. Intangibles. All right? I personally like Baker Mayfield's spunk and his confidence and his intensity. But do his teammates? I mean, who came to bat for Baker, even anonymously, when OBS, o- Odell Beckham Sr., just went off on him with the viral video? Anyone? Who, who came out when Baker was embarrassed by the franchise? What teammates came out and supported him after the Deshaun Watson trade or after his surgery even? We saw one anonymous quote. That's it. So the intangibles are another part of this uh, equation, Wilds. So, yeah, I think Baker's better, but I am fully 100% on board with an open competition and made the best man win. I would just like to add one point because one of the things Brew said, Wilds, which has just become canon, is that Baker Mayfield walked into this amazing situation, had all this talent, and Darnold, by the way, you know, he had the Jets and then he had the Panthers. The Cleveland Browns were coming off an 0-16 season when Baker got there, and the year before, they were 1-15. So for all the talent that they had, somehow they had won one game in two years before Baker got there. He wasn't – this isn't James Worthy getting drafted to the Lakers with Magic and Kareem. It's like, oh, I mean, they were one – they were the laughing stock franchise of the NFL when Baker got there. And while he was there, they had four coaches and four offensive coordinators. They just were. Now, yeah, did they acquire some talent? Okay. Yes, but, but they the, were. The rest of the stuff, some talent, yeah, great receivers, great talent. running backs, great offensive line. So, come on, let's be fair. Okay. Let's be fair. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, all right, Broussard, this is why I don't think it's a open competition. I'll tell you, I'll put a scenario out there for you. Suppose you and I were going to go out to dinner, Okay. You say, Wilds, where should we go? Should we go to the place that we went to last time, right in the city, right in, nice and easy for us? I say, no, Broussard. 
I'm going to take you to my favorite little New England shanty, little coastal New England. It specializes in seafood. You will love it. I don't want to go to the steakhouse we normally go to. Let's go to this seaside shanty. And we go and we drive up there. We got to do all this different stuff. It's a little bit of a pain. And when we sit down and I'm ready to place my order, I look at the waiter and I say, you know what? I'm going to have the steak. You're right, Rosario. We should have gone back to the steakhouse. You're like, what are we doing? Why are, we, why are we even here? That's Baker. <laughs> if you're going to go through this long, drawn-out thing with Baker, are we going to get him? Are we not? How much are we going to trade for him? How much are we going to do a $5 million hit to the cap? And then just not to follow through on it, just to go back to the same old Darnold who you proved you didn't believe in when you benched him not once but twice. He's gotten hurt. He had a concussion injury. He had a shoulder injury. He got benched previous to that. They brought him back early for the Patriots. They're like, ah, we shouldn't have brought him. Lost there. They need to just turn the page. And I think by starting Baker, if they wanted to stay with Darnold, they wouldn't have brought Baker in. They would have just had gotten a plain old, boring, traditional backup quarterback. That's correct. So that's why I think it's even if he loses they the gave competition, up one. they're going to be like, you know what? Give Baker a shot. <laughs> No, Wiles, they gave up a fifth-round pick for him, a fourth-rounder at best. He had to take a $3.5 million pay cut for them to decide to do it. They gave up more for Darnold. They're paying Darnold more. And if Darnold outplays him in training camp, you can't put Baker out there when the other players saw that Darnold was better. you lose the whole locker room. you got to play which quarterback is best. I think it'll be Baker. I'm with you guys on that, but I'm not with you on just – you know, give it to Baker. He's been so Giving great. To him. I know he was the first quarterback in your guys' eyes to ever play through injury last year, and God bless him. <laughs> okay. Right? But I'm not making <laughs> that excuse for him like he you guys. He was the first are. quarterback Come on. to, ta- to win, win a playoff the game for the Browns in, in my lifetime almost. But just to be clear, one clarification on Wild's fun analogy, Sam Darnold is not a steakhouse. He is a jack-in-the-box that was shut down by the health department. So let's just be clear. He's not, he's not more 